This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Without a healthy mind, being happy is hard. Visit betterhelp.com super and see if online therapy is for you. Hey, brother! Well, Pixar has gone and set their lasers from stun to kill you guys because they just released the new Lightyear trailer and I am dead. With excitement. Like, I don't think I realized it until I watched the trailer, but I think I've been waiting for this exact movie since I saw the opening of Toy Story 2 way back in 1998. You know, the scene where Buzz is like flying around and infiltrating Zerg's base. Like, I'm always a little disappointed when they zoom out and it's just Rex playing a video game. I'm always like, ah oh, man, I could have watched an entire movie about that. But you know, then Toy Story 2 starts playing in earnest and I'm like, well, this is pretty awesome too, so it's okay. But now, at long last, we're getting the full movie! Or at least a version of it, and man oh man, you guys, do I have lots of questions and hopefully lots of answers. Like, what's the deal with Sox, the robot cat, and why are they flying around the sun, and are they even on Earth? And, of course, how will this fit into the Pixar Theory? The Pixar Theory, the Pixar Theory, we're finally going to see it clearly. The Pixar Theory. Okay, you guys, get your fine tooth combs out. It is time to frame by frame some trailer. First of all, this movie just looks like it is going to be a straight up love letter to the entire sci-fi genre. I mean, just in the trailer alone, it looks like there are nods and references to all kinds of stuff, some of which I'm sure are even just going over my head. But like right out of the gate, just look at this shot of Buzz's ship in this swamp. This is almost a picture perfect recreation of Luke's X-Wing on Dagobah. Except of course for, you know, the Zerg bot in the background, but more of that as we go. My first thought when watching this trailer was just, when on earth is this happening? Because the one thing we know for sure is that this is the real life story of the man who inspires the action figure that Andy eventually asks for for his birthday. That means that whether or not you subscribe to like, you know, the full on Pixar theory, which of course you should, that at the very least, this story is still canon to the Toy Story timeline. <laughs> My goodness, if that's true, then seriously, when is it happening? Because assuming the Buzz Lightyear action figures came out in 1995, which seems reasonable given the hype around the action figures like at Al's Toy Barn and stuff, plus the commercials actively playing on TV at Sid's house. The world's greatest superhero, now the world's greatest toy! But we also know Sputnik is a thing that happened in the Toy Story timeline thanks to the prospector. Two words, Sputnik. Once the astronauts went up, children only wanted to play with space toys. Sputnik was launched in 1957 and Toy Story takes place in 1995. That means there's just a 38 year window in which this could happen. Which I agree does sound like a lot, except that the technology we're seeing in the Lightyear trailer seems to far outstrip the available technology we're seeing in Toy Story. But hey, speaking of outdated technology, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Candid. Yeah, what you think of that segue, huh? Guys, when I was growing up, I had crooked teeth, and the only option for correcting them was braces. Which, like, yeah, they worked, but they were uncomfortable, expensive, clunky, and took forever. Like, I had braces from 7th to 11th grade, which in, like, middle school, high school time is an eternity. Honestly, some days I'm not sure I still don't have them. But that's where Candid comes in, because Candid makes removable, comfortable, invisible aligners that work fast. And what sets Candid apart from other aligner companies is that they only work with orthodontists, people who specialize in moving your teeth. And with Candid, you work with the same orthodontist who created your plan from start to finish. And, and there is no need to ever physically enter a doctor's office. The entire thing can be done remotely. But if you'd prefer to go in person, you can also book an appointment at a Candid studio near you. The average Candid treatment is just six months, but you'll start seeing results way before then. And it costs thousands less than traditional braces. Candid can help you get the straighter, brighter smile you've always wanted, and our viewers can get $75 off their Candid starter kit today when they get started from home. Or again, you can just book an in-person appointment at a Candid studio near you. Just head to candidco.com slash SCB and use promo code SCB. Again, that is candidco.com slash SCB and promo code SCB. Take advantage of this limited time offer. Get $75 off your Candid starter kit. Again, one more time, I'm candidco.com slash SCB, promo code SCB. Link is in the description. 
down below. For one, do you remember this line from Buzz? Do people still use fossil fuels or have you discovered crystallic fusion? Oh, crystallic fusion, you say? Well, it's interesting you should bring that up because we actually see that very thing in the trailer, like right here. I love that they included that, by the way, but I guess it means Woody's answer should have been, um, yes, we have discovered it, but instead we are also still using fossil fuels. Plus, just besides that, they also seem to have like uh, lasers and laser swords and fighting robots and helper robots and just really advanced space travel, which just like it doesn't it doesn't seem like it's adding up. But actually, let's pause on the helper robot thing, because two things. First, wow, oh, wow, does Eric here look like it arrived fresh on this set after its day shift on the Axiom? I mean, right down to the same style of font, the overall aesthetic of the robot, and the use of acronyms in naming the robot. Coincidence? I think not! Thank you, Bernie. Second, Eric itself seems to be explaining a potential timing problem to Buzz and his crewmate Hawthorne. What Eric has drawn on the whiteboard looks to be the basic gist of the mission they are about to undergo and an explanation of time dilation. Basically, Buzz is going to take off in his ship, circle the sun, which we see him do, and then return back to the planet and finish through three rings. We can also see that during the process, after Buzz finishes orbiting the sun, that he will enter hyperspeed for a little while, which actually makes sense in like a very sci-fi kind of way. Basically, what they're doing is using the sun's orbit to propel Buzz into hyperspeed. And while the like hyperspace aspect of this is pretty fictional, this is actually a real maneuver used by NASA when they want to send stuff into like deep, deep space at really, really fast speeds. Also, not for nothing, hyperspace in light year looks an awful a lot like hyperspace and Wally. -E. The rings, in case you were wondering, and I know I was, I think are a way for Buzz to decelerate from hyperspace so that he can safely land back on the planet. But for a few minutes there, he will be in hyperspeed, which means he will be moving so fast that he is literally aging slower. And the whiteboard explains that for every minute Buzz experiences hyperspeed, everyone back at home will experience a full year's worth of time. Basically, Buzz is going to time travel in a sense a little bit into the future during his trip. The real question though is, how much further into the future is Buzz going to go and why are they doing this mission at all? What is the point of sending one man just a little bit into the future. Well, for one, I don't think it's gonna be like super duper far into the future, like Planet of the Apes style or anything. Like for one, we see a lot of the same characters. Like Hawthorne, for example, seems to have uh, been promoted a couple of ranks since Buzz was gone, but is relatively the same age. But it does look like maybe he'll suffer some sort of malfunction that affects his intended return time. So maybe he overshoots it or undershoots it by just a little, but I'm guessing while he's away, that's when things are gonna start to go wrong back at home. Or more specifically, that is when Zerg is going to begin rising to power. Because make no mistake, Zerg is going to be in this movie. I mean, for one, we've already mentioned the Zerg bot back on Dagobah, which looks extremely similar to the robots that Rex is fighting in the video game in Toy Story 2. Plus, then there's this like whole troop of very similar looking bots right here. And this ominous red glowing door, which looks to me to be an almost exact recreation of the elevator scene from Toy Story 2 where Zerg shows up. And if I had to guess based on nothing but the trailer so far, I'm gonna say it's this guy, the man in charge. God, it is hard to read his name tag. Uh, D Dernside? Burnside? Burnside, yeah, okay, that, that does sound more like a word, and it's more specifically like an evil word, like someone who's gonna go to the dark side. Because let's face it, this guy just looks angry and controlling and up to no good. In fact, it wouldn't even surprise me if he's Hawthorne's father, and that's where the whole I'm your father thing comes from, because she looks like she's going to remain a good guy. But so then, what's his plan? Why is he sending a lone ranger, Buzz, into the future? And I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty tricky guesswork, because we don't have a whole lot to go on but my best guess is that he needs access to something that is going to expire soon. So he's sending Buzz with that item into the future while he finishes construction on whatever it's going to be used for. And I'm sure he'll give a very noble sounding reason, like he's sending fuel sources into the future or something. I mean, look, they even have these giant scare canister looking containers positioned everywhere. Plus that's always just a really good excuse for why you'd be needing or handling a lot of energy to cover up whatever your actual 
evil motive is. Like, who knows? Maybe that crystal is actually the key to his ultimate weapon, but it's gonna stop working in a year and construction on his Death Star or whatever is gonna take four years, so he needs a way to preserve it until then. And I do think Death Star is the appropriate word there because action figure Buzz has always had a lot of Star Wars influence in his backstory. I mean, Zerg literally claims he's Buzz's father in that elevator scene. I am your father. Plus, then there's this line from Toy Story 1. Toys at the edge of the galaxy. Emperor Zerg has been secretly building a weapon destructive capacity to annihilate an entire planet. Yeah, that right there, that is a nod to the Death Star from Star Wars. And oh my God, would you look at that? A giant spherical spaceship right here in Lightyear. What are the odds? And if you don't think that's a giant spaceship, just look at this patch on Hawthorne's arm. That is that ship blasting off. And check this out. Early in the trailer, we see Buzz in his room, 27A. But then later in the trailer, we see Star Command security breaking into room 27A, seemingly to apprehend Buzz. Wow, it almost looks like someone who seemed like they were a good guy turned the good guy army into the bad guy army on their giant floating spherical base of operations. And if that sounds familiar to you, it's because it's exactly what Darth Vader does with the clone army in Star Wars. I mean, honestly, it would not even surprise me if real Buzz is going to end up having like a droid companion that has the plans in it. Specifically, I think it's gonna be this cat, AKA Socks. Just watch the scene where Buzz discovers Socks in this box in his room. He totally freaks out when it moves, suggesting he has never seen it before and does not know what it does. But how can that be? How can Buzz have never seen this cat before? Well, I think it's because Socks is going to have been the innocuous item that Burnside sent into the future that he will eventually need to enact his plan. I mean, we literally see Socks plugged into a wall socket right here, like R2-D2 style, right next to a giant ominous button that says, launch. What do you think he's gonna launch? Unfortunately for our bad guy though, Buzz ends up with the droid and now we have a full-on droid hunt on our hands. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. So based on the trailer, that is my guess for the overall plot of the movie at this point. But it still doesn't answer when this movie is happening in relation to Toy Story and why suddenly the technology is so advanced. Well, I think that might be because this movie isn't happening on Earth. I mean, at the very least, when you see this 3D model of the mission they're about to go on, the planet they're leaving from doesn't look like Earth. And this vine thing that attacks Buzz right here doesn't exactly look earthly. But then on the other hand, they do have cats and speak English and wear dog tags, all of which seems extremely earthly. So at the very least, they must be from Earth. And that almost seems like a given because whatever happens in the movie must be such a famous story that it inspires the creation of the action figures on Earth. So maybe they aren't on Earth at all. And all the advanced tech is a result of the resources available on the planet that they are on. Some of which, of course, then does make its way back to Earth and become the, you know, forerunners for uh, b &L robots and the Axiom and stuff. Or, and this is sort of my like tinfoil hat conspiracy, but I don't hate it. It's possible what we're watching isn't happening at all and is instead a movie inside of the Toy Story universe. That Buzz literally is just an action hero and that at the end of the movie, we'll see the camera pan out and reveal Andy watching the movie with his mom asking for the toy for his birthday. Which I'm not gonna lie, I that sentence just gave me chills. But guys, I am just so pumped for this movie. It feels like it's gonna be just a very Star Wars inspired Pixar movie, which is something I never really knew I wanted, but now that I am very happy is happening. I think that sentence made sense. But Ben, my question for you and everyone else is, are you excited about this movie? And what other Easter eggs did you spot in the trailer? Did we miss any? Let us know about all of them in the towel section down below. Thanks as always for watching today's video. Don't forget to leave a like on it if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Pixar action from us. If you want to see the truth about Andy's dad, our Toy Story Zero video, what happened before Toy Story? You can check out that video right here. But Ben, until next time, I will see you in another life, brother.